a letter to my body. Thank you for growing and morphing and changing to bring my baby into this world. I'm sorry that in the past I've called you too much and not enough, poked and prodded at you and looked in the mirror and wished that you were different. Thank you for all of the ways you serve me on a daily basis. You are not defined by what the media tells you you should be. You are defined by the hugs you give, steps you take, and joy you exude. I promise that from now on, I will take care of you and treat you with the love and respect you deserve. Now, I know that might seem a little cheesy, um, but I think it's important to start off on that note because if you're watching this and you are pregnant and you are scared about the changes that are coming up, I don't want you to be, but I know what that's like. I felt that I was so scared about what would happen to my body and I didn't want to be. I thought it was, you know, silly that I felt that way, but you can't really help the emotions that you go through. Um, so I want to start coming from a place of gratitude. If you are a fellow postpartum mama and you are watching this video to feel a little bit less alone, don't worry, you're definitely not alone. We all go through wild, wild changes through pregnancy and postpartum. Um, and our bodies are a really amazing thing. Somebody telling you that doesn't necessarily help how you're feeling if you are, you know, not feeling super confident and you don't have the best body image. But I think uh, writing a little bit of a letter to your body can be helpful. So I wanted to start there. Today's video is part two in our postpartum body series. And this video is going to be all about how to love your postpartum body. For a little bit of background on this, I experienced some pretty bad body dysmorphia during my pregnancy. Like I just didn't feel like my body was my own, if that makes any sense. And I would see myself in pictures or videos or even in the mirror and I felt like, you know, that's not me. Um, which was very weird and I've struggled with body image most of my life. I think, you know, a lot of young women do. Unfortunately, there's so much media messaging about needing to look a certain way in order to be beautiful and also just that like being beautiful is the most important thing that you can be. And so I basically dieted on and off from like late elementary school all the way up until almost when I got pregnant. Um, so I didn't have a great relationship with my body and I knew that big changes were coming after I had a baby and I knew that it was time to really take a look at my relationship with my body and figure out how to make it more positive. And I wanted things that were very active because I think during pregnancy you hear a lot like, oh, your body's doing an amazing thing. Like it doesn't matter what it looks like afterwards. And logically, like you get that, you're thankful. But emotionally, I think there can still be a lot of fear um, I definitely felt that way. I was very scared um, about what my body would look like postpartum and so I wanted things that I could actively do and work on that would help and make me feel like I had some agency in the situation instead of just like sitting around waiting to give birth and feel magical, which I did. I mean, giving birth made me feel so strong and capable and amazing. And I definitely think that that helped, um, but there were other things that I did that I think were health tips. So hopefully they help you as well. So the first thing um, that I'm gonna suggest is something that I didn't do and I desperately wish that I had. If you are still pregnant as you're watching this video, go get a belly cast kit on Amazon and make a cast of your belly. Um, I know it might seem a little bit silly and like extra and large to keep around your apartment or house, um, but uh, the reason that this can be really helpful is if you are experiencing some kind of body dysmorphia or even if just postpartum you are looking at your body and you're upset about the changes that you're seeing, you can take that cast physically put it like on your midsection and remember like how much you stretched and changed and grew and how that led to this um and i think that that's helpful to be like oh yeah i'm not broken or anything like i had a giant belly i had a baby like this is the thing that happened i will definitely be doing that for my next pregnancy um and yeah i just think it would make it feel more more real looking back at photos and videos and stuff of me being pregnant i don't feel like it's something that happened to me i feel like it is something that i watched like a character in a movie or a book doing if that makes any sense so being able to bring that back in a very like physical 
way I think would be very helpful. The next thing I want to talk about is belly oil or lotion or butter, um, anything that you're doing in your pregnancy and specifically in your third trimester to relieve itching, keep doing that in your fourth trimester. Um, I know a lot of people do this to try to prevent stretch marks. Honestly, stretch marks are mostly genetic. I'm sure you guys have all heard that before. Um, so I did like belly butter twice a day for my whole pregnancy and I still got stretch marks, which is totally fine. Um, but through doing that, I had to take a few moments every single day to connect with my body and to like feel the changes that were happening and be thankful for them and doing that into my fourth trimester. I did it every single day for the first like 12 weeks of Rowan's life helped me to remember that my postpartum period was a continuation of what had happened during pregnancy. Um, again, I think that keeping those two things very connected is important because I think when you're suddenly not pregnant anymore, like you get pregnant and then your body changes so gradually and then you have your baby and then it's like, you're not pregnant anymore, just like that. And I think it can be really jarring. Um, and remembering that this is a transition that you're in and that like your body isn't gonna look the same way in a few months as it did a few months ago, it's just helpful and to remind yourself that it's a dynamic thing that's happening. And while you're doing that, you might want to do some positive affirmations, say something nice to yourself. One thing that I heard from Katrina Scott's podcast, Live Beautifully Actually, um, was a um, body positivity advocate and model whose name is Hunter McGrady said that one of the things her therapist told her while they were working on body image um, was that she should get out of the shower, brush her hair straight back, um, no makeup, like while she was naked, look in the mirror and say 10 things that she wanted to love about her body as if they were true. So, you know, I love my nose, I love my chin, I love my tummy can tell where my examples are coming from. <laughs> and to do that every single day. And that's something that you can do on a smaller scale with uh, like some kind of belly oil, like ritual that you do for yourself. Thank your body and talk to it with love and kindness. Speaking of talking with love and kindness, one of the most important things that you can do to love your postpartum body is to change your language. Um, I feel like the language surrounding postpartum can be really negative and have a lot of expectations and pressure that comes along with it. So things like saying, I wanna get my body back. Those things can be really hurtful because you never lost your body. Your body was with you the whole time and more than that, it was doing something incredible that served you. And I think um, talking about like the snap back and things like that can be just a lot of unnecessary pressure. I'm a really firm believer in the idea that our realities are largely made up of the stories that we tell ourselves and language is a huge part of that. So pay attention to how you're talking about your postpartum period and your postpartum body. Um, and if you're being negative about it, maybe think about why and how you can change the language um, in your head to make it a little bit more positive. Another tip that I have if you are specifically dealing with some insecurity around weight is to do blind ways um, at your doctor's appointment. So especially like your six week postpartum appointment, I want you to turn around, step on the scale backwards, tell your nurse that you're doing a blind way and that you only wanna know what the number is if it's concerning to your doctor and your doctor wants to speak to you about it. But otherwise, you know, if it's a few pounds heavier or a few pounds lighter than you thought you would be, like you don't need to know that and it's gonna create a lot of unnecessary stress for you. Also, Try not to weigh yourself obsessively um, if it's important to you to weigh yourself because I know for some people it is. Um, if it's important to you, pick a day of the week and only weigh yourself on that day. Don't get up every single morning and weigh yourself because the fluctuations of that can be really stressful. I keep saying the word stress and pressure because I think that's what a lot of women experience postpartum. Um, and I wanna help alleviate that a little bit. Another thing that I would highly recommend doing is buying clothes that fit your body now instead of trying to make yourself fit into your pre-pregnancy clothes. Um, there's a huge like stigma around like when you fit into your pre-pregnancy jeans, which is so dumb. But rather than doing that, buying clothes that make you feel good and comfortable in the moment um, will actually in the long run probably make you feel a lot better than trying to squeeze into clothes that are too tight for you. Because even if you are buying a size larger than you've ever bought before, and maybe that makes you uncomfortable, feeling comfortable in that clothing is probably 
more valuable than being uncomfortable and and being very aware of the fact that your body has changed so much again nothing wrong with weight gain nothing wrong with your body changing i don't want to shame that at all or say that buying bigger clothes like even permanently it's a bad thing because it's not but if you are struggling with the size change um that can be a helpful tip. Another thing that you can do to love your postpartum body is to exercise, but specifically exercise to feel strong and not to punish yourself. This is something that I struggled with a lot. Um, I felt a lot of guilt when I didn't exercise and I was very anxious about losing the strength that I had before having a baby because I was really fit and very strong. Even like during my pregnancy, I worked out a lot and I was very strong. But that can create a really unhealthy relationship with working out. Um, and the reason that you work out is to feel good, to feel strong and to fuel your body. Um, it's not ultimately or hopefully shouldn't be to lose weight or look a certain way. So that can look like changing the kinds of workouts that you do. That can look like doing shorter workouts. That can look like taking a walk instead of going on a workout if that is what serves you that day. It's important to listen to your body and listen to what your body needs. And there are some days where what your body needs is to sit on the couch and that's okay. And then lastly, I want you to write a letter to your body. I know this might feel a little bit silly, um, but I think it's really important to verbalize and vocalize the things that we are grateful for for our bodies and also to apologize for the way that we have treated our bodies in the past. Because if you're anything like me, you have maybe not been as kind to your own body throughout your life as you would be to a friend or a family member. Write that letter and read it every single time you're feeling down. Talk to your body as if it was one of your friends I know that's such a cliche tip and we hear it all the time and it's kind of difficult to remember to do in the uh, in the moment when you're feeling down or upset. But yeah, I think I would never talk to a friend the way that I talk about my own body sometimes. So that can be a struggle, but a really important thing to do. So those are my tips for you guys on how to love your postpartum body. I hope that they're helpful to you. I know this is something that I say in a lot of my videos and it might sound like a broken record at this point if you watch regularly, but have grace with yourself. Try to give yourself time and be patient. And at the end of the day, remember that your worth is not defined by your size, your shape, your fuzzy little baby hairs. <laughs> if you look back at your life, it's very unlikely that you would ever say like, oh, this person changed my life because she was so beautiful. People change our lives because of how they love us and how caring they are and how patient they are. And they inspire us with their work and their vivacity. I promise nobody is thinking about the way that you look the way that you are. And I am really stinking proud of you. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope that it helped. I love you guys so, so much. I think about you all the time. I'm so grateful to have this community. And I hope that today you give yourself a little bit of extra love and care. I'll see you guys all in the next one.